everyone, so uh, today I'm going to be talking about ways to explain your illness to, you know, whether it's family, friends, your boss, uh, you know, your teacher. Um, there are three ways that I'm using because these are the only three ways that I know. Um, the first one is the screen theory. I think this is definitely the most well known because uh, there are communities on Twitter, Tumblr, um, you know, there are so many shops that sell, like online shops that sell stuff to do with the screen theory. It's definitely the most well known and that one's mainly about fatigue. Um, another one is the gorilla in your house which is mainly about a disability in general. It doesn't say anything about fatigue. It's just the fact that you've become disabled. And the third one is uh, shot in the knee which has been making its rounds on Tumblr um, but it's not been out there for very long. And it's amazing. It's when I read it, I was like, "This is the most amazing thing ever." It's definitely helped, and it's a way to describe pain. Um, so I'll just go through the spoon theory really quickly, just in case you guys don't know. Um, if you're wondering why I've got so many spoons, it's because these are the ones that I keep in my bag and I take them to school with me. And basically, I'm just weird. Um, so the spoon theory is where you can explain it to someone else. So let's pretend I have an imaginary friend here that I'm going to explain the spoon theory to because I don't actually have any real friends. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so you know, like, it doesn't have to be spoons, you could literally just grab like, whatever you have, like 50 of or whatever. Um, so you know, obviously, said person here has, oh, not very far off unlimited spoons to be honest. Whereas today I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven spoons today because that's what I keep in my bag. No wonder my bag's always really heavy. So you know, you have your ones of getting up, get ready for school. Now when said imaginary friend here eats their breakfast, they get energy from it. I do not. Because why would my body make my life any easier for me? So then you've got going to school, which realistically is about 100 spoons, but say goodbye to four. And um, so I have one spoon left, I have homework to do, and I also have to go to work. So which one do I use my spoon for? And obviously my friend who's sat here still has a gazillion spoons. They can do their homework, they can go to work, they can go to the cinema, they can hang out with friends and then go to bed at like 2am because they've stayed up on Facebook and they still won't be as tired as I will be. So I have to decide, do I cancel on work and not get the money? not do my homework and get in trouble at school. Um, and you know, obviously seven spoons is... Some people, they really differ on how they start it. Some people will say I've got 20 spoons, would be like say I've got seven spoons. To be honest, it doesn't really matter how many you start with. It's pretty similar for a lot of people. And it's just to be honest, whatever number you think up first. So the spoon theory is definitely great for fatigue. I'm gonna put a little link somewhere on here to, um, um, interactive spoon game that you can show your friends and family it's great uh, it's kind of a stuck in cycle where you can't win so there is no making it through the day with doing everything you wanted to which is great because that's what that's what it's like for us uh, the second one is the gorilla in your house um, and I don't know who this who, who created this because I will give them credit for it but it's on so many um, different blogs that I just have no idea where it originally came from. So the premise is acquiring a disability is a little like coming home to find that there's a gorilla in your house. So you call up all the appropriate people that you need to, so in this case the NHS, or if you live in America, like a hospital, whatever, um, and they just like, uh, mm, no, they, they tell you that they can't do anything because um, they don't really, know how to do anything and they just tell you, you know, that's a gorilla, that's all we can do. Uh, and then they send you back home to the gorilla that's in your house. Um, now the gorilla will cause lots of problems in your everyday life. Your spouse or your partner may decide that they can't cope with the gorilla and they might leave. Family members might also like, um, realise they can't cope and they might ask you to leave if you live with a family member. Um, your boss may get upset that you that you've brought the gorilla to work with you because it's disrupting other colleagues. Uh, 
and they they don't know how to deal with a gorilla so um, and then you arrive to work wearing a suit or wearing whatever it is that's been crumpled because the gorilla decided to sleep on it um, some days you don't even manage to get to to work at all because the gorilla sat on you and will not let you get up or they have barricaded the door so you can't get out um, your friends will get annoyed because you um, you have to keep cancelling on them and then when you do come out of the house um, your only topic that you can talk about is the gorilla because it's currently taking over all of your life um, and there are three approaches for doing something to the gorilla in your house and the first one is to ignore it and just hope it goes away and a 300 pound gorilla will sleep where he likes and if that's on top of you it will only have an effect on you so that doesn't really do anything uh, the second one is to try and force the gorilla out wrestling constantly with it spending all of your time fighting with it and it is a losing battle so you choose to give your money to people that say they can get rid of the gorilla um, and they will come and wave crystals from a safe distance uh, they will you know try acupuncture etc etc um, and so once you've spent a lot of money on it and you finally get someone who can get rid of the gorilla um, and they claim victory and they tell the media that it's a massive breakthrough in gorilla control and the other 99 gorilla wrestlers just aren't doing it right and that's because due to sloppy thinking or lack of commitment and there are so many people that have spent their life and spent so much money trying to get rid of this gorilla that you, the only the only way that they can kind of get rid of it is just to, to hope and even if you do manage to get rid of the gorilla you can never go back to your pre-gorilla gorilla life because you will be older you won't have much money you will be exhausted and afraid that the gorilla might come back and the third way is to this is where it doesn't really apply to illnesses as much as a disability because it well, you'll realise when I said it. The third way is to accept the gorilla and tame it and make it a part of your life. You figure out a way to calm the gorilla down and you teach it how to sit still while you're at work or while you're going elsewhere. Um, you can take, teach it to take, so you can take it places without making a scene. Um, negotiate with people like your boss about um, bringing the gorilla to work or accommodating for the gorilla um, and you meet other people who live with gorillas and enjoy having something in common and share gorilla taming tips. Now obviously it's really difficult to just accept an illness because of so many restrictions over a disability for example where someone has just lost the use of their legs. Um, I'm not saying that one's worse than the other, it's just a quite different, the, the two situations are quite different. Um, and then people get really upset that you've, you know, that you've tamed your gorilla and they accuse you of giving up and not even trying and then they suggest that you ha only have the gorilla with you because you want attention from it. So that one, it, it's more for a disability in general, um, but it's, it's another great way of, um, you know, explaining it to people because people were like, oh I don't want a gorilla in my house and then you can be like, well how do you think I feel? I don't have a choice to get rid of this gorilla. And the, first, the third one, sorry, not the first, the third one is the shot in the knee theory. Uh, I Honestly, I think this is just amazing. This is more about pain and a lot of um, illnesses, they do have severe pain as a symptom. So imagine a stranger has just come up in the street and they've shot you. So you're on the ground and someone calls an ambulance, but the ambulance is stuck in traffic and it can't get to you. So of all the people that are around you, no one is a doctor, no one works in health. Um, no one can do anything to help you until the ambulance arrives. Um, and no one can do anything without your pain. So the question is, are you going to sit there and cry and scream? Or are you going to accept that you know crying and screaming will not make the ambulance come any faster? So you manage to calm yourself down and at this point the ambulance is still nowhere near you, it's still stuck in traffic. Um, and someone who will come up to you and say, well, you're calm, you can't be in that much pain, you know, you're just being lazy. But just because that you're calm doesn't mean that you can just get up and walk because for God's sake someone shot you in the leg. 
and then you see that there's a truck coming towards you. Everyone else has always has already run out of the way. No one's helping you. So you have two choices. You let the truck that has lost control come and run you over, or you try to get out of the way. So you you're still in pain. So you crawl and you roll and you fidget your way out of the path of the oncoming truck, and you find you you manage to get to safety. But just because you've managed to do that. It doesn't mean that you can function on a daily basis. You manage to get yourself out of this extremely dangerous situation, but it doesn't mean that you're just gonna get up and continue and go to work because you've been shot in the knee. You know, you can't just get up and just go do, you know, go to class, go to work. And the whole thing is, it's about smoke and mirrors because it also is called shot in the knee, AKA smoke and mirrors theory. Um, and it's, you think that we can function on a daily basis with the pain, but what you see is also no chimeras because we can't. You don't see the um, the consequences that we face because of pain. Um, so there are the three uh, ways that you can explain chronic illness. Um, let me know in the comments what your favourite one is or which one you are more likely to use. Um, there will be links to the Spoon Theory, all three of them. Um, and if you have an idea of what you want me to film next, just leave it in the comment below. Or you can uh, message me on Tumblr if you want to remain anonymous, something like that. Uh, I hope you guys are all as well as possible. Thanks for watching.